So it's now uh, Saturday, October 5th, and I have to go to Amsterdam to meet up with the rest of the jury members, but I'm a bit late, so let's get going. So while you see me travel to Amsterdam, I will explain a little bit more what this literary prize is all about. Together with 49 people from Belgium and the Netherlands, I was selected to be a judge for the Bookspot uh, Readers Literary Prize. So it's a prize from the readers to the authors of 10,000 euros. All judges were selected based on their letter of application and we were selected from a group of over 500 applicants. So I'm so excited that I'm part of this group. So guys, there we are. We're going to start and I'm looking forward to meet everyone. When I came inside, I could already see this amazing stack of books. Uh, but first it was time for the official Bookspot event. And they organized this really cool program for us where we could hear from a professional judging committee how they would handle the official literary prize. Um, and in addition to that, we also sat down with the authors to hear more uh, from, from their perspectives on their books. In the end, they also signed our books, which was very cool and packed with this bag full of goodies. I went back home. So today is October 5th, uh, Sunday, and you saw me go to Amsterdam yesterday to pick up all my, uh, my books. And I wanted to show you to them because this pile needs to be read within 31 days. Um, it's 1400 pages, so that's quite something. It averages out to 46 pages a day. Um, and I was really thinking about how I would approach that. So whether I was going to, uh, you know, structure for each day up until which page I needed to read. But I thought, hmm, I think that's going to make me crazy if I have a deadline like that each and every day. So I decided for each book, given its length, when I need to finish it, uh, I put a reminder in my calendar uh, and I hope that's enough structure for me to finish up in time because of course I want to read all these books in depth before being able to uh, give a proper judgment on them. Um, let's dive into those books because I think you will be curious to know more about them. The first one is by uh, Bart van Loo and uh, I hope I pronounce this correctly and it's called The Burgundians. Um, it's a historical uh, non-fiction book and it's about the Burgundians and how they uh, came to the Netherlands and Flanders all the way from, of course, uh, Burgundy. Um, it's a hardcover book. It has a lot of colored illustrations in it. Let me see if I can show you one. Right here. So it gives the book quite a luxurious feel. And what I found really interesting is that one of my uh, Flemish fellow judges told me that within Flanders, because of this book, the independent bookstores outsold the book chains. So that makes me really curious uh, uh, to read more about it. So then we have uh, a book by Lieve Joris that is called... Uh, back to Neerpelt, which is the, the, uh, her place of birth in Flanders, also a Belgian author. And it's a non-fiction book about her family history and how they were dealing with her brother, brother's drug abuse and how that affected the family. And then finally, the only novel on the list and also the only Dutch author on the list. And it's uh, Otmar's Sons by uh, Peter Buwalda. Uh, I think some of you might know him from his uh, first book that's called Bonita Avenue, which was um, uh, quite, um, uh, which got quite good reviews also internationally. Uh, and this is part of a trilogy. Uh, this is the first one, so two more are coming. And it's about uh, the two sons of Otmar. One of them is working for Shell for a, uh, uh, on an island where they are going to do drillings. That's about the synopsis that I got so far. Currently, I'm already on page 61 of this book. This is the first one that I uh, wanted to dive into. I'm not going to tell you about what I read so far because I want to give my judgment when I'm a little bit further. Um, 
So I am just going to stop talking here because I really need to start reading. So I will check in with you later. So today is Sunday, which means that I didn't film anything for an entire week. Partly that had to do with, I thought just showing myself reading on the couch might be quite boring to watch. Um, but also because I quite struggled with the book, to be honest. Um, as you can see, I'm not yet as far as I want to be. I want to achieve, uh, uh, to reach the blue sticky note today. So there's quite some that I need to do. Um, and I will explain in depth what it was that I was struggling with in my next video because I have to leave to meet my family in a few minutes. Um, but I, yeah, I struggled with the reading and at one point I even thought, am I going to finish this book or is this the basis of my judgment of this book? And I thought, no, I have to finish it all the way up until the end because maybe there are some things in it that help me understand the beginning. Sorry for the noise. <laughs> Um, th so maybe those things help me understand the beginning of the book. Um, uh, and I also try to find some strategies to motivate myself more in, in trying to understand that story. So that is what I will talk about in detail in the next video. What I think of this book uh, and why I think it's good or bad. Maybe maybe my, uh, my thinking will shift along the way. Um, but also how to keep yourself motivated if you're facing uh, a little bit of a dip in your reading like I did last week. So for now, this is it. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I hope to tell you more about my literary journey next week. Bye.